This video is going to demonstrate how FeatureCam works hand in hand with Inventor Files. I'm going to open an Inventor File directly. And you can see here that I'm browsing for Inventor Files and that I can open parts or assemblies. And I have this one part right here. I'll open it up and FeatureCam will want to know if this is going to be a milling file or a turning file or a wire file. Uh, you can bring in solids for any of these formats uh, into FeatureCam from Inventor. So this is going to be a milling file and I'll bring it in and we get this import results window. I'll drag it out of the way just for a minute so I can show you the part. It brings it in cleanly and I'll shade that. And you can get a good look at it. So what I'm going to do now is use this wizard to establish the initial setup location so I'm going to orient the part in my file I'm going to build stock around it and I'm going to import features directly from Inventor specifically holes if you create holes in Inventor and you have Inventor on the same computer as FeatureCam FeatureCam will access the Inventor data and be able to manufacture the holes exactly as they are designed in Inventor so for example if you have tapped holes in Inventor they will be tapped in FeatureCam automatically i also launch AFR after finish. This is automatic feature recognition. And this is how FeatureCam will then interrogate the rest of the part beyond the holes and create all of the other machinable features. This wizard helps me get the part aligned in Z and in X so that I can manufacture this on a milling machine. It helps me put stock around the part and I can go with a known stock size or I can go with a stock size that I compute off of the stock to, off of the part dimensions themselves. Next I can locate my origin. This is just my uh, datum for my toolpath inside of FeatureCam. You'll notice that there are features on multiple sides of this part. There are a couple ways I could machine this in FeatureCam. If you have a machine that has a turntable type capability, if there's an indexer on the machine, we can do this as an indexed part where the part will be machined on one side and it will index to the next side to be machined. Or we can have it just produce separate operations for separate clampings on the machine. So I'll go with that option. I'll, I will set no indexing. And finally, it's ready to go. I have the option to use Inventor to extract the information about the holes that I mentioned earlier. These holes will be uh, machined exactly as they are defined in Inventor. Furthermore, it will suppress those holes so that subsequent feature recognition operations won't recognize them a second time. So when I run that AFR at the conclusion of this wizard, it won't recognize the holes that have already been extracted from Inventor. So I'll click Finish. And what FeatureCam is going to do is, since I do have Inventor on this machine, it will access that information and bring it in and use that to select tooling and, and machining techniques. If I don't have Inventor, I can still recognize the features. I'll just do it through FeatureCam's recognition. And I'll have to give it a little more information. I'll actually have to tell it that it's a tapped hole or maybe that it's a countersunk hole, but I can still recognize the features. Okay, it's finished you can see that I have features built over here on the left side and the holes are actually in patterns as they should be. FeatureCam went ahead and created a second setup for me. I'll drag this out of the way. You can see that there are holes on this side. So that takes a second setup, a second clamping uh, to machine those holes. So that, did, that happened for me automatically. You can also see that my operations are automatically created. So the spot drilling, the drilling, the counter boring, whatever is required, maybe even if tapping is required, all of those tools are selected automatically through my manufacturing attributes or my machining attributes and applied to this part. Okay, now I'm into automatic feature recognition. The holes have been finished. Now I can recognize the rest. I have some machining options. You know, I can create special kinds of features. I can create 3D features if required. That's not really applicable to this part. I can walk through this wizard. Really set up two only has those three holes and they're finished. So I can just turn that off and I will finish the wizard. It will ask me to accept the remaining features and I'll say yes. 
you can see that some side features for these profiles are generated. And I'll run a simulation to see what I end up with. And again, Feature Cam picks all of my tooling, my feeds and speeds, my stepovers, all that stuff automatically based on the geometric information it gets from Inventor and generates my toolpath. And every time I have a generate toolpath, I have NC code, my G code that goes out to the machine. Of course, this is the ultimate purpose of CAM software is to generate this program. So it's very quick, very simple to take an inventor part and generate toolpath accurately. I'll go ahead and run my setup too so you can see those holes machined as well. If this part changes, Feature Cam will recognize that the part has changed and it will give me the opportunity to bring in the new version and recognize any new features or any change features that may be in place.